episode four of graphic content, I would thought for sure the internet police would have taken us down by now because it just keeps like sliding down. Just goes to prove how dumb those cunts are. PG oh, my anus. That's anyway. Anyway, we should we should talk about what's on the show instead of letting you carry on the way that you do. Uh, we've got Brumble Chilada. We've got an interview with him. Which Brumble Chilada. Is... Uh, we also have uh, Marvel vs. Capcom. Have you played the Marvel vs. Capcom games? Often, even this morning. No worries. Uh, we also have Crossed and uh, Punisher Max, which is going to be very and interesting. XP. Yep. Is that was that like YMCA but with Max? No, with Cross, you dick. Okay, all right, all right, all right. Um, right and yeah, just plenty of plenty of good stuff, like we always do. Always. I, th I think we have very good content, despite our discussion. The content is amazing, although I should point out that your mileage may vary. Thank you very much for that. But we, you know what we should do? Uh, one person whose mileage for me doesn't vary, Colin Wilson, probably one of the most talented men in the biz, I would say. I'm not gay, but I'd suck your dick, Colin. Mr. Wilson, sorry. No worries. Uh, let's just go Thank you for the picture. Hi, my name is Colin Wilson, and uh, thanks to a misspent youth uh, growing up in New Zealand, I've drawn comics all my life. Uh, I went overseas uh, a long time ago to London on a holiday and uh, got my first break drawing Judge Dredd for 2000 AD. And um, drawing comics seemed like a wonderful thing to actually be paid to earn a living doing. And uh, ever since then, I've had the chance to work on a, a lot of different material from, uh, from the UK, from France. And uh, over the last 10 years, I've done a lot of work on things like Star Wars in the States. And um, I'm still enjoying it to this day. So uh, we've reviewed some very uh, a wide range of comics on graphic content. We, we, we've you know we've come from the Quitter, you know, Transmet, all these great comics. We thought we'd look at Garth Ennis, which takes us into the vast recesses of humanity. A bit dark and bluish. Yes, with, particularly with Crossed. Mm. Crossed is one of the two we're looking at. The other one's Punisher Max, but mm, mm, mm. Crossed is uh, it doesn't have particular. Its content content. is graphic on this graphic content. Yeah, yes. Um, Forced. But uh, but like, I don't know like even by Garth Ennis standards some of the things that yeah it's are, fucked up yeah that's there's no it's fucked up there's no polite way to even do, I mean we're talking like you know sex with dead babies mm -hmm. you know, all the stuff that people make jokes about on the internet he pretty much does it makes a Serbian film look like something that was squeezed from the end of my knob yeah that had a slight strawberry flavour. As in, it was evil, but it still had a pleasant taste. Yeah. This stuff is hardcore. Yeah, and, and Fuck you, Serbian film. Crossed is badder. It's worse. It's worse, but I like it. So it's not worse in a bad way. It's worse in a worse way. It's more graphic. Anyway. <laughs> uh, um, but no, I, so the, the story as well. It, it's, they're, they're demons, but they only like pass it on through... They don't pass it through the traditional way. I've had some people kind of say it's basically kind of like a zombie post apoc yep. Sort of in that it's basically the last few humans left against a rampaging horde. But yep. for every argument that it is a zombie post apoc kind, there's also arguments that yeah. it isn't. You know, yeah. and the crossed are an actual species of thing. Yeah, yeah. You know. It's it's not as simple. It's kind of like... The, yeah, well, it is. It's a little bit more like the thing. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, whereas, yeah. And I just... I, it's... Yeah, don't don't let your kids read this one. No, like, no, so really, this is not bedtime. Genuinely, stuff. don't because it's yeah, like, it shows proper. But that big, there's a two-page splash where he's being raped in the bum bum, and it shows the penis going in the bum bum while his guts are being cut out, and in the background, his four-year-old child's being ripped in half with axes, and there's naked dudes. Yeah, yeah we get, we get, we get, we get, we get, we get, we get. Oh, I'm so anyway. stiff right now. Punisher Max, stop. Anyway, Punisher Max. Yes. Now you've read a lot of the Garth Ennis. Punisher Max. I have a serious thing for it. Yes, it's good. So, and I've read the Jason Aaron one. Mm. So it's interesting to come at it from both points of view because Garth Ennis is known for Punisher Max. And Jason I'm known Aaron. for coming at things. Okay. Ah! Um, Jason Aaron, not so much. No, no, I don't come on Jason Aaron very often. Okay. Um, uh, well, what, what do you take away from it? Did you like it? Was it everything that you could have hoped for from an Ennis? Honestly, it was the Punisher that I would have always wanted to have but probably couldn't have existed in the 90s because it's, it just, it's, yeah. it's the Punisher as in... He's a horrible psychopathic maniac who yep. lives to kill. He's not someone you want to meet, but he's an interesting character to read. Yep. Like Judge Dredd. Wouldn't want to meet him, love to read him. Yeah, and, and, and this is the same thing I think with the Jason Aaron one was a lot of the stuff that happens doesn't portray him in a positive light at all. Like, yeah. you know, he, he is, he's a loner, he's a sociopath. He's literally, he can say whatever he wants about, you know, the family life and stuff like that. He just enjoys yeah, mangling people that, and he's yeah, found an excuse. Yeah, you, you, that was a hundred body counts ago. You, yeah. You know, stop. Yeah, <laughs> and, and I think that's what works. Is You're right. It's not somebody you'd like to meet in the streets because you'd probably end up stabbed. But at the same time, it's an interesting tale seeing 
how he came to be. Do you know yes. what I mean? Like how he, he yeah. I, think that I agree sense. completely. So I'm, I'm being intense as in, mm, Jason, mm, preach, okay. preach it. Mm, mm, preach it. Mm. No, we should do preach for another time. <laughs> <laughs> Segway and not the two-wheeled you know, vehicle. Why did you tell them? No, two-wheeled vehicle, okay, Segway. I, got it, I, got I, actually, I pointed it out. I created the extra <laughs> double Segway. It's like a Segwayception. <laughs> So when, when you're taking you know, classic comic book characters from the Marvel Universe and you're thinking, what kind of game can we make? My first thought isn't, let's mix it with Capcom and make a Street Fighter game. But maybe that's just me, because that seems to have been the, the, the formula for success for a lot of the Marvel vs. Capcom games. It started with X-Men vs. Street Fighter, then it was Marvel Super Heroes, then it was uh, Marvel vs. Capcom, Marvel vs. Capcom 2. And more than anything else, it was just the fact that Capcom had already made the sprites. So they figured, let's just chuck them in a game together and make them fight. Three comes along, they have to build it from the ground up. It's a completely different thing, but it's been a it's been a great success for them. It's it's really over the top and flashy. You've got three people on each team fighting against each other. You can technically have all three on screen at the same time from each team fighting each other if you've got enough meter. But it's all about combos. The way the combo scaling works is it's completely different to something like a more yeah, honest fighter, like a, a Street Fighter or a Virtual Fighter, where it's more about oh my kick has advantage here and you have an advantage there. This is about getting in, knock him into the air doing as many hits as you can. I mean, you see up to like 105, 150, you know, just ridiculous number combos just because of the nature of the way it works. And I don't know, it's it's one of those things. Being a comic book fan, sure, you can enjoy it because, you know, you get to see Hawkeye and, and all of these characters, you know, fighting and, and being cool and doing all their flashy moves. If you're a Capcom fan, yeah, you get to see all your characters as well. If you're a fighting game fan, there's a huge community surrounding it, so you'll always be guaranteed to find someone who's interested in it. But it's a big barrier of entry. The other problem you face is that with the recent change in the Marvel license, you can't even buy it on the uh, the Xbox Live Store anymore. So uh, I don't know where you're going to find a copy. But look, if it sounds like your thing, get hype, yo. What's that time again, Darren? Uh, you're going to show us some cool stuff because there's always cool stuff here. Whenever there's we always cool, cool stuff coming out. Uh, and one, the, the, probably the coolest thing I've seen here in a while is, uh, yeah, the, the David Tennant, Tenth Doctor figuring out it's a limited edition one. Yeah, they've, they've gone back a little old school here. They've gone 3,000 worldwide. This is from Dynamics, and they've based it off the, uh, the comic more than yeah. the show, which is why you get that nice sort of comic. Yeah, it's, it's very manga face. Yep. Like, it's, it's straight up yaoi at some point. Yeah, so, yeah. it's a bit of... You do have two options of two heads, one with, some, one with glasses, glasses, one without. Yeah, it's important. Like, yeah. you know... You know it's always hard to get a little head. Glass, yeah. yeah. Uh, are you Ben? Anyway, <laughs> but uh, but you've just had the Hooniverse, and yeah, it's it was good to see Matt Smith. But let's face it. Yeah, Tennant was the one that really brought Doctor Who yeah. back, you know, and everybody was in love with Tennant from my you know my grandma to my niece sort of thing. But uh, we'd love to see him in Australia one day too. That's true, and Eccleston, but that's never going to happen. So. Yeah, that, that's why I have that. Yeah, yeah, well done. Um, but that's not the only thing we've got. We've also got cars. cars. Now I don't know. It's <coughs> it's one of those weird things. There always seems to be some kind of new like. Yeah, uh, Hot Wheels team to do a lot of these kind of you know random pop culture cars, yep. and I know it's it's the thing. I mean, it's, it's you know the collectors as they grow up, you know they they want retro is always cool. Yeah, it means old but cool, as you know. Yeah, yeah. So you know all the shows that you grew up with, like Magnum and Miami Vice and stuff like that, they've done these beautiful little line of collectibles. They're only ten bucks a pop, so you don't feel like you're getting screwed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But they do them with the cartoon characters and stuff like that. They do with Battlestar, and they've become this beautiful little collectible that's uh, you know especially in the show. If you take your kid there, you don't want to spend hundred dollars. And yeah, you just get him a Pong car. Yeah, it's yeah, perfect. They might not know what Pong is. No, but that's yeah, true. Yeah. But then you could say, oh, when I was, you know, 20, this was big. And that was 70 years ago. So. It's the thing, though. Matchbox is quality. And it has been around for generations and generations. It's, it's those kind of things. They're kind of cool. That's, that, and that's very true. But speaking of, I guess, retro being cool, we should discuss. Now, <coughs> you know, growing up, you know, when I was you know, in, the, 80, in the, the mid to late 80s, uh, I never got into Thundercats. never got into Transformers. Any of that kind of stuff. Aww. I know, right? Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, though, were huge. And uh, it's weird to see, uh, again, at 28, I never got into the rest of them. This one I got into in a big way. Well, uh, yeah, it's kicking in the 30th year for Turtles. Now, That's you know, they've never really gone away. You, no. know, you know, they've been comic book form written by our friend Tristan Jones. They've been, you know, around in different variations well, of yeah, comics. Yeah, and, and, and I mean, because it, it had its, you know, its big run there, and then it got a little bit too wide, so they brought it back. And then it had the really kind of bad run in the, the early stages. Yeah, nice. And it's come back huge again. Like, it's amazing yeah. how the long lasting appeal of it. It's one of those things. I mean, we've seen in this, the, you know, the, like, we've talked about My Little Pony coming, yeah. Big Pony coming. Everything that we loved when we were eight and nine and ten, kids that are eight, nine and ten Seriously, love again. 
Well, and, and it is funny to see. I mean, Kevin Eastman, who I guess started it, you know, sold it all those moons ago. He's back writing it thirty he's, years later. He's writing it. He's probably, he's out here in October from again. That's so true. So yeah. the turtle fans will be there to meet and greet. It's uh, it's. I guess it's a good time to be a, a turtles fan. Everything that old is new again. Is that what you say? That's, I, I don't know. You tell me. You, you're old enough. <laughs> Most of the people we talk to are artists or writers, but you've got a big break as a colorist. That's like that's like your forte, isn't it? Um, well, I don't know if it's my forte. I mean, I'm known for coloring more than anything because I've been doing it since 1994, which right. makes me older than you think. <laughs> um, but uh, wow, that's, they're not applauding me, sadly. Um, <laughs> or, we can't be we, we can't be Tyler Posey. Yeah. yeah. Oh well. Um, no, but uh, I've been coloring since 94. My brother uh, taught me how to color, and I've been fortunate enough to work in comics and make a living and support my family uh, uh, doing uh, computer coloring, uh, which, for those of you who don't know, um, somebody writes the story, somebody usually draws it in pencil, another person inks it, and then uh, uh, the inks are scanned, so it's black and white artwork, and then once they're scanned, they're sent to a colorist whose job it is to paint in the colors. They put in the, uh, all, the, all the lighting and uh, they set the mood, much like a cinematographer or something in film. Uh, and usually they're painters and people who come from that background because you have to know about form and shape. Well, because that's, that's what I was going to say. I imagine it would be a, a little bit different in that um, you would have to like take into account how saturated the color is, when to put in like you know, a bit soft, a bit darker, that kind of thing, which is something I guess people don't realize how important it is to actually the whole package itself. Oh, absolutely. I think with colorists, the funny thing is you generally don't notice a colorist unless they're bad. Yeah. Like if a colorist does their job right, it just becomes part of the art and it just looks good. Uh, but when a, color mess, a colorist messes up, then you're like, ooh, that's, something's wrong. It, you know, th those are gaudy colors, it's muddy, you know, things like that. So there's lots, there's lots that you need to know uh, to be a colorist. Well, it's, it, it sends some of this like a soundtrack. A good soundtrack is one that just adds and doesn't, yeah, and you'll only notice it when it's a bad one. Right, absolutely. And uh, you know, uh, it used to be that uh, like an inker uh, would be somebody who could save a bad artist or kill a good artist. And now I think colorists are sort of in the same uh, arena because with digital coloring, they can do so much. Like if you've seen all kinds of painted styles and like some really impressive uh, colorists out there, uh, they can add an awful lot to uh, an artist, but uh, people who mess up can also take away quite a bit. Well, the other side of it, you have your own project, which is Foster. Do yes. you want to go into that a little bit? Or? Oh, absolutely. Uh, Foster is a creator-owned uh, project of mine. Uh, I am publishing it myself, and I'll give you my one-minute pitch. Basically, uh, uh, Foster takes place in Vintage City, which is like 1974 New York. So uh, think uh, French Connection, think Taxi Driver. It's analog, it's gritty. That's the world. In the world, uh, there are these creatures called dwellers. They're like these Neanderthal monster creatures. They can speak, they can pass for humans when they want to. They live in the shadows, they live in the, uh, uh, in the ghettos because they don't get along with anyone. That's the world. Those are the monsters. In that world, uh, Foster is the main character. Foster is a Vietnam veteran who is drinking himself to death. One day he comes home and his uh, neighbor's missing and her six-year-old son is left alone. He takes the kid in and it turns out those monsters want that kid. Right, okay. And you, you got to read it if you want to know why. Well, I, I'm going to say, uh, normally, I'm, I'm one of those people who will go on recommendations. Foster caught me from the cover artwork. Like, that is some fantastic artwork. Oh, thank you. I appreciate it. So, I mean, well, it sounds pretty cool, and I'm, I'm actually probably going to like, I'll steal one while, while you're not looking at it, no, I'll steal it, so I'll, I'll, pay, I'll pay legal tender for it. I appreciate that. Yeah. People seem to like it, you know, uh, so it's, it's, not, it's not anything like Flash, it's a darker tone, and it's, it's really sort of a, a love letter to like all my favorite movies from the 70s and that whole genre, so. No, it's good. Yeah. Well, sounds very cool, Brian, thank you very much for your time. Absolutely. Good luck with everything. Take care. That was Brian Bucciolato, who the uh, colorist, and I think he's writing now for The Flash, which is, it's, yeah, okay, that's, I was running. Yes. Um, uh, as someone who draws a black and white comic book. With uh, greys. With, okay. Um, yeah, do, you, do you look at someone like Brian, who, who, like, can call himself a colorist, because he actually goes to, I mean, it's really articulated, it's really well done. I mean, have you ever thought of, you know, colouring your comic book? Or? Actually, specifically because of his awesomeness, I have coloured my last two covers of Cranburn. There you go. So, like, and you're just you're happy sitting with you know, black and white for the rest. It's oh yeah, no in, interiors. Uh, a, it's my style, and B, uh, I wouldn't be able to produce 40 page issues as rapidly if I had to yeah. also colour them. It's you know, I am but one man. It's an economy of scale, pretty much. Yeah, yes. yeah, I get it. With an average sized penis, but large testicles. Okay, that's always something to put on your resume. I think mm, it's, mm, it's important mm. that people. Who I might... have one hell of a sack. Speaking of which, happy sack. Uh, supernova. Supernova. 
Colin Wilson will be there. Sax, Supernova. That's the same thing. It, it was yeah. <laughs> anyway, anyway, let it go, let it go. Uh, Colin Wilson, um, again, we love his art. You should definitely go. Check Get a commission out. from him. Yeah. yeah. If you can, he's a busy man because he's awesome. And that's that's both very true on both those points. Uh, ben Temple Smith uh, as well, so he's back and. I know it's like it's, it's a decent comic book lineup. So I, it's, it is. I, if you're a comic book fan, I guess it's worth uh, having a look at at least. You look at it, go to it, enjoy it, participate. Uh, well, now all of a sudden we've become like a life beginner dad, but that's okay. Eat vegetables and go for a <laughs> jog, or you'll die in your fifties. All right, all right. Jeez. Anyway, uh, Don't we, smoke, you fucking we sh- idiot. We should wrap it up. Wrap horrible. It, stop. Graphic content, where uh, you know, New Game Plus presents graphic content. Gift uh, for the Geek. Like us on Facebook, Gift for the Geek. Thank ben you, Michael Byrne, Phonetic Cranburn, Jeez, Jason you've, O'Callaghan. You've done really well. I didn't even have to do that, Ben. I love you, Jason, okay. and I want to suck your cock. Okay. <laughs>